Welcome to our fourth chemistry video describing how electrons fill orbitals and the shapes of those orbitals. Last video we finished the second energy level, N equals 2, specifically covering the P subshells. And in this video we look at another S subshell, this time for the third energy level, N equals 3. Remember each row or period on the periodic table represented a principal energy level? And so far we have elements in seven rows or periods? We also know the first two columns or groups, known as the alkali and alkaline earth families, represent electrons in an S subshell. For hydrogen and helium, the first principal energy level, N equals 1, we saw two electrons in the 1S orbital. This S subshell we know is a spherically shaped region around the atom's nucleus and is more of a cloud rather than just a thin shell where the electron orbits within a region and not just on the surface or a fixed path like the moon around the Earth. We also know that with two electrons, one will have a property of spin up, while the other will have a property of spin down. And we recall from the Pauli exclusion principle, only two electrons, each with a different spin, can go into one orbital, and so with two electrons, the 1s orbital was full. For the next shell, in principal energy level n equals 2, we saw lithium and beryllium, and the first two electrons in that level were again in an s orbital, we called 2s. As always, there can be the two electrons in each orbital, and for the 2s we have one with spin up and one with spin down. The remaining six electrons in the second principal energy level were in the p orbitals, and we covered those more in the last video. In total, with eight electrons in the second shell, that shell is full. Now, we'll look at the third row, or principal energy level, n equals 3. And again, take the elements in the first two columns, sodium and magnesium. Sodium from the alkali group has an atomic number of 11, and so it will have 11 protons in the nucleus. There will be 12 neutrons to keep the protons from repelling enough to push the atom apart, and so to remain electrically neutral, the sodium will also have 11 electrons in orbit. Remember the Aufbau principle, we build up the electron cloud? So, we see the first two in the 1s subshell, and the first shell is full. The second two electrons go in the 2s subshell, and then six into the 2p subshells, not shown here, but that gives a total of eight in the second shell, which is now full. So sodium, the 11th electron, will go into the 3s subshell, which is the third and slightly larger spherical region around the nucleus. Also remember, the electron is traveling around the atom, not in a rigid path on the surface, but considered as a wave or a spread out particle, which when measured would be somewhere inside the sphere most of the time. We also look at magnesium from the alkaline earth group. It has an atomic number of 12. 12 protons will have 12 electrons. And so this 12th electron will also go into the 3s orbital. Again, from the Pauli exclusion principle, we know that 3s1 and 3s2 will have different spins, spin up and spin down. To recap, to get to the third principal energy level, we build up the electron cloud. Two electrons in 1s. Two electrons in 2s. One electron in each of the 2p, x, y, and z orbitals. And then a second electron in each of the 2p, x, y, and z orbitals. And then finally, as shown here, the two electrons in the 3s orbital. Hopefully in this video you have seen and now really get a good sense for how the s subshell electron orbitals are filled, and that each principal energy level is for now just a larger region where the electron must be most of the time. Our next video we stay in the third principal energy level, n equals 3. And while in the same shell, we will show how the 3p subshells for aluminum through argon fill up similar to the 2p subshells. We hope to see you in that video, and if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up or a comment down below and help the channel grow by telling a friend or becoming a subscriber.